Hello, I'm Toycat and welcome back to another Geography video. This is everyone's favourite second channel series where I talk about geography and the world and stuff. And today I wanted to talk about a part of the world which you probably only know of something, you know, that happened there about a millennium ago now, uh, which was of course the Mongol Empire. And it's a country which is sandwiched between two of the world's superpowers, the first largest country by area, Russia, and the third largest uh, country by area, uh, China. You can probably work out by now. It is Mongolia because the Mongol Empire. But yeah, this is the Mongol uh, Mongolian Empire at its peak. As you can see, Mongolia is a little bit smaller right now, but it's still a very large country and it's one you don't really hear too much about and I think there are reasons for that but it's still a very interesting country that I've been having a bunch of like targeted ads telling me like fly to Yulabunta for this much and I've just been you know I, I saw so many of them I was like you know what, let's look into it let's see why we should go to Mongolia and I figured why not share some of the findings with you all in today's video because Mongolia is a very interesting country and it's very different to, at least to me than any other country I've done too much digging into so far so I thought you might all enjoy that so yeah Mongolia let's talk about the country because it's one of those also interesting places not only is it only surrounded by two neighbors by the way it, you might look, you might look like they, you know, they have friends of North Korea or like, uh, you know, Kazakhstan, but there is no border between any other country besides Russia to the north. Again, you can see that right there, and then there's China to the south. There is a 30 kilometer gap between, uh, you know, the very, uh, you know, west side of uh, Mongolia and the very east side of Kazakhstan, but they're they're not really connected. They just have China and they this just have Russia, and this kind of influences the whole country and almost to some degree the culture. But yeah, let's uh, first of all talk about the population because compared to Russia and China, it's absurdly small. So as well as being a smaller country, even though it's very large, the 19th largest on earth and larger than any European country, uh, you know, or at least any European country you're probably from if you're watching this video. Uh, so it's a ridiculously sized country, right? Uh, you know, 19th largest on earth, but it only has 3 million people living there. And that's a massive, that's a really stark contrast to, uh, you know, China, which has, it's the largest population on earth, like 1.3 billion right now. It goes up and up and up a lot, uh, but they have more than 400 times the Chinese people living in China. Then there is Mongols in Mongolia and Russia, which has 150 million. So yeah, they're very small compared to their neighbors. And this is why I think, you know, and, and their neighbors are both superpowers. I think this is why maybe they lose the culture war and there's less of Mongolian culture going out there. But that doesn't mean there isn't Mongolian culture. Uh, culture. Again, they're so distinct and separate and confusingly, uh, you know, different to their neighbors in a really, really fascinating way. So yeah, there's 3 million Mongolians living in Mongolia, the state. I want to clarify more why I'm saying the state versus Mongolia as a whole, because there is a difference between, you know, this Mongolia, the current Mongolia, and Mongolia the state. They're one of those countries where like, you know, who knows what's going on. Uh, but yeah, there is 3 million people living in this little thing right here, what we call Mongolia today. And off those uh, 3 million, 1.2 2 million roughly live in the capital. So about 40% of that, which means the rest of the country, again, the 19th largest country on earth, live in the rest. There is a, you know, 1.8 million people living in all of this. And that might sound like a lot, like 1.8 million people, but when you consider just how large this area is, it begins to think, like, it begins, you begin to realize like, oh, that must mean there's a lot of nothing. And indeed, uh, Mongol Mongolia is still one of the very few countries where horse culture is very important. 98% of the country consider themselves to be nomadic or semi-nomadic, so they move around and stuff like that. And uh, there is more more horses on Mongo in Mongolia than there is people. And to put that in comparison, the number of cars in the US versus number of people is one of the highest in the world. It's like second or third. And there's about, you know, 0.75 cars per person. There is more than one horse per person in Mongolia. So they basically, they take horses more seriously than the US takes cars, which is pretty impressive, right? So yeah, that's uh, the horses in Mongolia. Everyone rides one. There's more horses than people. They're very cheap. And the crazy thing about Mongolia, the country, is it's very easy to like race horses there. So they actually, you know, they can just leave them. So you buy a horse one day, you leave it out beside your front garden it will take care of itself even in the snow it's like trusted to dig for its stuff basically they're crazy of the horses and their horses are crazy of them so isn't that wonderful and in fact the reason the mongol empire could get so big you might think how do you have an empire that big 800 years ago is because they had this really clever system where they could relay messages on horses by you know not exhausting one horse they like use one horse use one horse use one horse and it was a really expensive system of messaging but by having such a vast system they could maintain an empire that big and that's why the mongol empire was in fact the second largest in the world so anyway yeah uh, horse culture as well as having horses and everyone having one and they just leave them be. Uh, they also use horses for sausages and they milk the horses too, which is concerning to me, but whatever, Mongolia. So yeah, because of this horse culture, that's how people get around for some part. There are still roads and cars and like, if you go to Google Street View, they are real roads meant for cars and stuff, but there's a lot of horsey, uh, horsey culture too. Yeah, I was gonna say like, oh, you can't say horsey culture, but you know, what? I can say horsey culture all I like. So um, if you kind of want to get an idea of just how sparsely populated the country is, I think one of my favorite examples is just kind of like zoom in anywhere you can on the map. So just be like, oh yeah, let's see what this little bit of road over here looks like. And I think this is actually a city I've just happened to come into. Or yeah, it's Kovod City. Uh, that, that was a city, by the way, that thing that looks a little bit like a town. But um, if we just go to some random stretch of road that like is, <laughs> for some because for some reason their whole road system is kind of done like this. Uh, what you'll eventually find is you'll just see like a road and then nothing but the road, just 
dead nothing in every direction. And bro, man, this is one of their like major roads. This little kind of like dirt path that you know, the Google thing's going over. It's pretty nutty stuff. But yeah, that's something you'll find if you look onto Google Maps. Any major point, uh, there's a, this is one of my particular favorites though, because there's just a gas station, as you can see. It's a little gas station with some Mongolian gun in there. And then in every direction from here, it's just nothingness. And this is some, this is a common sight across all of the country. If you pick like any of the photo bubbles, you're probably gonna run across, you know, some uh, crazy thing like that. So for instance, if we, um, so I'm gonna like try and find some photospheres. How about this one right here? So this is Cargas Lake. As you can see, there is the lake itself, just nothing but lake in that direction. And then maybe some mountains. And then if we turn around, it's nothing but like desert with I guess there's like one house there. <laughs> and it's just it's just amazing to me, like the expanse. I, I live in a very urban place and to just have a whole country of just rural, I don't know, that, that's, I can't, I don't have a word. I just have the noise to explain that there's so much of it. And that is Mongolia. So yeah, very rural country, very low population density, but that's a part of what makes their country special in a way. And that's kind of wonderful. So yeah, Mongolia's, uh, that's Mongolia, the country though, Mongolia, the state, uh, which is very different to Mongolia, the kind of cultural region. And the reason for this is because Mongolia, that's only referred to as Mongolia, is actually outer Mongolia. There is a country, there is a place called Inner Mongolia, but it's actually one of China's provinces. So this is the really confusing bit because there is more Mongolians living in Inner Mongolia and therefore in China than there is living in uh, Mongolia. However, even within the Inner Mongolian province, there's still a minority. There's only 18% roughly of people who live in Inner Mongolia who are Mongolians versus, you know, almost 100% in Mongolia, which is pretty crazy. So that means that the place where most Mongolians live, they're not even the majority. And the place where there is majority, most Mongolians don't live. It's one of those confusing little things. For the record, there's also some Mongolians in, uh, they're in the Siberia region of Russia, which is a much bigger place, but they're not called Mongolian. They're called like, you know, they're, they're a diverted tribe. So they're related but not entirely the same. But still, that means that all, all the people that are currently called Mongols live here and there. And a uh, fun fact about both places, because the Mongol language is official in both, is that the Mongolian language is a very wacky, again, it's a wacky Asian language. I don't know if that's an okay sentence to say, but it goes top to bottom. And unlike most top to bottom uh, languages, um, one, it's not really meant to be rotated left to right, whereas Chinese and Japanese, uh, the two famous ones you probably know, uh, kind of can be rotated. Uh, in Mongolian, it's not meant to do that. So they literally just 90 degree rotate and it's not too great, but it's something they do. The other interesting thing about the top to bottom script, which by the way looks like this, do you see it? It's kind of cool, great, right? Is the fact that um, it's the only top to, bo uh, top to bottom script which goes left to right. That's very, uh, you know, un uncommon. And it's just uh, an interesting little thing. They, they got the, you know, the left or right or upper bottom down, but at least they're going in the right order for Western standards. So go Mongolia, left to right, isn't that wonderful? So the, oh, the other thing is that it's one of the few languages you can call a logical language because every sound is separated to its own letter, whereas, you know, alphabets in the West aren't so quite so great. So yeah, Mongolia, there's your language, there's your people. They live sometimes in in Mongolia, sometimes in Mongolia. And in fact, by the way, most of the Mongolians live on like the, the rural edges, which stick out like that. And um, in fact, even uh, although in spite of this, the place where uh, Genghis Khan's uh, uh, tomb can be found is actually in this place called Ordos. So there's a little park over here, I believe. Genghis Khan's mausoleum tourist area, or Genghis Khan's mausoleum. You can go see Genghis Khan. Isn't that great? But he's in China. He's in a part of China where there's a majority of Chinese people, but that's still where Genghis Khan was because again, Mongolia used to be way bigger and now it's not. And the reason for that, let's get into the little history of Mongolia before we go too much further, is because Mongolia, again, used to exist as a much larger thing and then it was eventually taken over by the Qing dynasty. I've got that wrong, I'm sure, King. Queen, whatever. Anyway, the Q-I-N-G dynasty, which also uh, involved uh, not only China, but Mongolia and little parts of what are modern day Russia. So yeah, this entire thing was part of that dynasty, but eventually because the Chinese really wanted to, they, they, they did lots of unfavorable things to Mongolians as like a play to keep Mongolia safe uh, and China indeed safe from all the superpowers around them. Cause you know, unstable part of the world when you got Russia that close by. So they did some bad things to Mongolians. Then Mongolians were like, let's try and be free. And because it was communist time, they decided to be communists. So outer Mongolia got free and that's why the minority of people live in this or the, I, that, that's why even though the state is bigger and the state is like, <laughs> again, it's confusing, but there's a minority of people that live there, even though they're majority, and that's because it's only out of Mongolia. So they got free in Mongolia, however, stayed with China, and they became part of the communist revolution there to free the country and blah, blah, blah. That's how we have China now, but also that's how we got Mongolia. And the interesting thing about Mongolia is you might think, okay, so Mongolia was really good friends with the USSR. In fact, by the time the USSR uh, collapsed, I think one third of the GDP of Mongolia, that's an absurd number, by the way, one third of their GDP was was just money coming straight from Russia. Like not, you know, like imports or anything. Like here's a here's a grant, go go do some good stuff with it. And uh, that, that was why uh, Mongolia had such a giant collapse after the fall of the USSR. And uh, their, their economy is doing really, really well today, today, by the way. They're one of the fastest growing in the world. But you might then question, so if they were such good friends of the USSR that they'd send them that much money, 
one third of their economy. You know, that's that's a lot of money, one third of anything. Like, you give me one third of my net worth and I'll be happy of you. You give Russia one third. You know, point being, a third is a lot of anything, right? So why would Mongolia not the 16th uh, USSR Republic? Because they actually wanted to be one. They applied... Well, you know, well, they applied. They they tried as hard as they could to be a, a USSR republic, and Russia, you know, took over a bunch of countries and had a bunch of satellite states. But why did they not take over Mongolia and make it, you know, USSR Part 16? That would have been more territory, more stuff like that. And the similar to this question is they didn't really want to, and they were also forbidden to. So yeah, there was no real benefit for them taking them from satellite state, which is basically what they were. You know, they were under Russia's influence. They were communist, and they they followed Russia's goals, um, especially under their command. And then uh, so you know, it didn't really matter to them. And also, they agreed with China because, as you can imagine, China and Russia, they kind of share borders, which Mongolia, you know, Mongolia is like the kid that gets in the way of Russia and China and there was some giant split and stuff. And basically, as part of like some trades they did way, way back at the start of the last century, uh, M Russia agreed not to make Mongolia a part of their territory and China agreed the same, basically. And and, and, and that, that's kind of how that goes. So Mongolia, now separate to Russia, now separate to China. It's just its own little thing that floats right there in the middle of, again, two of the world's superpowers. And it's a dangerous place to to be but they've got horses and you know horse sausages and what more do you really need so the final thing i'll say before we leave today's video is the fact that mongolia was actually very scared of china for a long time so even though you might think like well mongolia in mongolia they they have a logical connection uh this is actually something that was like Basically, uh, they, you know, the Mongolia was very scared of this being used for, you know, oh, Inner Mongolia, let's reunite that regular Mongolia. Kind of like in the uh, FYRM slash Macedonia situation, where they're scared, you know, Greece is scared that will happen to them. That was a, th a thing, uh, you know, Mongolia actually feared, because again, there, there's such this tiny power in relation to them. But China has agreed to have, you know, just more like, have your independence, we're cool with that, just be friends of us. And uh, indeed, uh, even though Mongolia was a very, very... Uh, I guess almost like a hermit kingdom, almost like the, uh, you know, the careers. Uh, they've actually started expanding more. And the UK, fun fact, because that's where I'm from, was the first, uh, you know, Western country not from the area to open an embassy there and to start foreign relations. So go UK, Mongolia, that's our job, right? But no, Mongolia is a beautiful place with so many things to see and do with one giant city, but also lots of other bizarre things. It has... I, you know, I, I shouldn't keep going on, but I really want to, because this is a little fun fact that I was like, that's kind of cool. There are no McDonald's in Mongolia. It's one of the very, very few countries on earth with no McDonald's. But even though you can't find a McDonald's, there is, if I'm not mistaken, a Burger King. There is, <laughs> So there is one place in the world where there is a Burger King and not a McDonald's. And I really enjoyed the, reading the reviews of this place, which, by the way, looks like this. Looks like a normal Burger King. Uh, I really enjoy reading the views because everyone's just like very very like apathetic towards it and it's like yeah Mongo go mongolians they understand they understand what working sports it's like yeah it's like pretty pretty okay it's nice good sometimes and i'm you know next time you think that mongolians are, are different to you just remember they think burger king is a 3.6 out of 5 as well so i hope you did enjoy today's video um i hope ho mongolia it was great fun to talk about and i'll see you in another one or i won't second channel don't care bye f9